Okay, so I just got out of watching Saw X for the second time with Dan. Dan, this is his first time on my uh, channel. And what was your anticipation going into this, just to give my audience an idea? What was your excitement? Where's your fan level at with this franchise? Okay, so I've seen the first Saw movie, and I did enjoy that quite a bit, but I haven't seen any of the other Saw movies, at least not as far as I remember. Yeah, so, and you know, like, I think it was good that you've only seen the first Saw movie, because this one takes place about five or six weeks after the events of the first movie. It takes place in between Saw 1 and Saw 2. Uh, so okay. this one's like a great, you know, middle, you know, in-between story for those two films. Um, you know, and as everybody knows, you know, the first time I watched this movie last night, I absolutely hated it. Mm -hmm. I... I wasn't a fan, like, I, I felt very conflicted when I saw it yesterday, like, I, you know, there were parts of it I thought was really great, but then there were other parts that I thought weren't so great, so I felt very conflicted as to whether or not I actually liked the movie or not. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I wanted to really give it a second shot, see if, like, those feelings were, was just, like, a mutual reaction to my expectations going into the film, or whether that's actually generally how I felt about the movie and you know I think this is you know the type of movie where I think a second viewing helps the movie a lot because I think there's at least for me kind of knowing what the twist ending is knowing how is it the, okay to say twist ending uh, we will get into that <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get into that like yeah we'll, we'll talk about spoilers um yeah a bit later on we'll, we'll keep the first part of the review spoiler free well I probably should have said that off the start but um uh, yeah, and, um, you know, I think, you know, going into this, knowing the structure and all that, I think there's a lot more subtle details that you notice throughout the film. Um, there's a great, great scene, actually. It's a very small scene in the middle of the film with, um, with Amanda and, uh, Celia, was it? Yeah. Yeah, with Celia, where they, where they're looking at each other, there's no dialogue, and just that scene, it speaks a lot of volume, okay. because the way I kind of interpret th that scene, like I said, it's only like a quick, you know, twenty second little moment, so it's very easy to miss because it's not a big part of the film. But you know, the way I kind of look at that moment is. You know, in Saw 1, like, I'm not sure if, how well you remember the first Saw, but mm -hmm. in the first Saw, Amanda was a drug addict as well, and um, Gabriella in this film is also a drug addict as well. So I think, you know, I think Amanda saw a little bit of her in Gabriella, and so, like, there's this kind of click that they, that those two have, and just, you know, I think, you know, that scene spoke, uh, spoke a lot more from a visual style of storytelling rather than actually saying it and so I think you know Amanda kind of looks at Gabriella as like this is you know this is her chance for redemption as it was you know once Amanda because you know and I think you know that moment I thought was you know really you know sweet moment uh you know for those two there and then there's a moment in the film that you know I noticed this time around that kind of hinted more at the twist ending of the film that involves a gun that's all I'll say for now but it's a very very quick moment and you know it all comes down to the way that this film's directed this was directed by Kevin Gruet who was uh in charge of Saw was it Saw 6 and Saw 7 and he edited every single one of these movies mm -hmm. um and you know I think the way he directed this film I thought was absolutely fantastic I think his directing here really shines I think the first half an hour of the film I think is the best part of the movie I, I did think far. the movie was pretty clever yeah no yeah, very it, clever. It, it is it is a very clever movie like your saw has always been known for its twist ending always um, and yeah like uh, yeah the the first half an hour like I honestly think is just a masterpiece like everything to the pacing of the of the first act to the story development to the way it's I shot I felt like the start was a little bit slow yeah like you know I think it was supposed to be slow though because you know it's supposed to be more kind of letting the audience kind of digest John Cramer because the other you know films is you know view John Cramer as just this you know as this villain like this guy he's putting people in a 
in, you know, in the trap and all that. And like, there's humanizing not humanizing really, him a bit more. Yeah, like in, in this film, they're more humanizing him. They're more kind of you know justifying you know the, the way John Kramer kind of sees the world. And you know, I think this film has a phenomenal, phenomenal opening. I think the opening to the film is just outstanding because like yeah, yeah, the, the, the first trap is. Probably my favorite. Oh yeah, I have to admit, yeah, the the, the eyeball trap, yeah, which we are gonna you know get into spoilers, but I'll put that in the uh, title. Yeah, the the eyeball trap. You know, this time around, I enjoyed it. I love the eyeball trap. It's it was just it was just gnarly looking. I loved the I loved the whole production value, the design of the set, the you know all of the color grading as well was spot on. You know, it very much reminded me of like very classic saw of like the whole you know sped up edit, sped up editing you might remember that from the first film like it had a very you know far you know fast style mm. of camera of camera movement to uh, show the intensity and all that and there was like a green filter and all that and that's always been like you know a signature you know saw you know saw you know you know thing that we expect you know coming to these movies and I think you know that trap definitely lives up to the hype. The other thing I guess that's kind of a little bit disappointing about that trap is two things I feel is it was a dream sequence. <laughs> yeah, that was the thing like the yeah. first time I watched it, I was just like I was just like fuck. You know? I was just like It's like oh it's such a good trap and it then is, it's it is. not actually real. <laughs> it is, it is. Like yeah, like since that's you know that's I talked about this in the in my other, you know, spoiler review I did with my friend, but um, you know, they built that trap up in marketing, like on the poster, that's the first thing you see on the poster and all through the marketing of this film, that's the one trap they're marketing. Wait, there goes the spoiler warning. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, You're going to have to edit in the biggest spoiler, <laughs> spoiler oh, yeah. coming up. <laughs> spoiler, yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, like, yeah. So the fact that it was fake, I'm still not a fan of, but then on the, you know, then the other way I kind of look at it is like this is the way John Kramer views the world. Mm -hmm. This is the way he kind of, you know, he looks at people. You know, these are the, you know, yeah. these are people. You just sort of like saw this me mechanism yes. on a patient's hand, and it's like, oh, that'd make a good trap. Mm -hmm. What? No, no. Like it's not so much that. Like he, you know, this guy at the start, you know, he was going to steal what was it a watch and um, I believe it was like a wallet, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, no, like and you know, he saw that because you know. He, you know, he doesn't own that. That's not his. And so, I mean, John Kramer saw that and it was like, um, was like, hmm, this guy needs to be teached a lesson. <laughs> so then, yeah, um, uh, what I was going to say, you know, another thing I did want to kind of speak on as that was kind of unfolding in the movie was one of my complaints I've kind of brought up to a lot of people is one thing I feel like this movie is missing, which I'll talk about this a bit more later on as well, but is the fact that there's no TV. Like that seems something that's oh. that seems like something that's so minor, but like throughout all the traps in this franchise, there's always been that you know there's always been a TV to kind of you know to come on it you know it shows Billy the puppet and you know he speaks what the instructions of the game are and all that and you know that's something I felt like was kind of they missing at least have the in puppet. Here. Yes, the puppet, the puppet was in here, which I like how he's in here, but. He's really unutilized. In the other movies, Billy the Puppet's kind of treated more as a character, but in this film, it's more of like a cameo appearance. He like he shows up, and yeah, he brings over some tools to the, for the uh, brain surgery trap. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. And you know, that was just disappointing because I was thinking as the um, as the eyeball trap was unfolding, I was like, if this is you know just a you know just a dream sequence i was like you could have easily put a tv in there that could have been like really classic you know clever og saw right there so you know i thought that was a that was you know a disappointment but you know it's not something that kind of took away from the enjoyment you know of that you know of that trap there and i think my other complaint i had with the eyeball trap this might be you know very you know controversial opinion here but i did not think it was all that bloody that trap I was like, as soon as these eyeballs come out, wouldn't it be sucking all the blood out as well? I was just thinking yeah, that. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I was just thinking that as I was watching. I was like, there's you know, there's a couple of blood squirts here and there, but I was like, this would be a lot more violent in real life. Yeah. <laughs> this is like if, if the eyeballs got sucked out, like all the blood from inside your skull would be would be fucking going a hundred miles out out that tube. Mm -hmm. So you know that I you know that I was kind of like, you know, I was like, 
you know, you could have really gone for like a really cool kind of R rated, you know, kind of, you know, kill scene there. But, you know, I, I loved the, you know, the eye, the eyeballs going round and round in mm-hmm. the tube. I thought that was sick. What did you think of the eyeball? Uh, yeah, so. Since you've already spoiled it. <laughs> well, yeah, like, yeah, like, it's gonna be in the title. It's gonna be in the title. Uh, it's all right. It's all right. So, uh, I, if, okay, if I was stuck in that trap, so the way that he does yes. it is he goes like, okay, level one. <laughs> yeah. ah! First finger yeah. breaks. It's yeah. like, and then he goes like level two, level three, slowly yes, each one. Slowly building up, yeah. And I thought like, if you once you go to level one, you break the first finger, and then it's like, okay, I get it. There's five switches, five fingers. Yeah. Bam! <laughs> Rip that bandaid off. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like, I mean, I can see why he was doing it one by one, but I was just like. To save yourself the pain here, buddy, just go to fucking five. Yeah, like, just do it as fast as possible. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> at least then you 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 at least then you'll you know you'll have the key and all that to get out of there. At least you you know that that would probably take a good two three months to heal maybe, but you know, that's all right. At least you don't die. At least you don't get yeah. your fucking eyeball sucked out. But then at the same time, I'm just also like, how do you get those tubes off? How do you really get them off even after? Like the whole, you know, even after the whole like traps finish, how do you get those tubes off? Because it, it looks like there was like a mask. They had to like untie from the back. I'm pretty or something. sure he helps out anyone left that's in the trap. Yeah. So he would have let him out. Yeah. True. I guess. Yeah. But yeah, you know, yeah, the opening trap I thought was just amazing. You know, and then we get into the story of the film. Um, you know, with John Kramer, and you know, I guess to talk a bit more about John Kramer. I love how he's more treated as a human here rather than and you know rather as rather than being known as the jigsaw killer which you know I like yeah, how he was very much of a yeah human character in exactly. this and he was uh empathetic exactly which yeah. you know I, I really like that cuz you know you see the way you know he's kind of talking to you know just the you know the everyday person like there's a great great scene when he's talking to uh, Henry which was at one of the uh, cancer uh, patient uh, meetings that they had where he's picking up like a muffin and like yeah there's, there's this very sweet moment between uh, between those two and yeah you see that the way that those two are interacting and even just the more you know softer moments with Kramer in this movie I, where... had, I had a bit of a moment where I was like Oh, oh wait! This guy like tortures people. <laughs> yeah, wait, what, 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 which scene in the movie what were you like? Oh, um, was, you know, a bit emotional. In what scene was that? Po- possibly when he finds out when he was screwed over. Oh uh, yeah, so like the scene when he like smacks um, the bottle on the ground, he sees that like the whole tape is fake and all that. Was that yeah. when, he go, when he goes back to the house? Possibly. I can't remember exactly the scene. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, just there's one moment in this film that uh, there's one moment in the first act that really stands out to me. Um, there's a scene when Kramer drops a tear, and you know, like it's something that it's so minor. It's something as so minor as just you know as a teardrop. But I thought it just it added so much to his character. It just it added so much, you know, so much liberty, I guess, to you know Kramer's you know story and all that. And I think it really shows that you know. Kramer, he isn't a bad guy. You know, he, the thing that went through my head when I saw that is like, oh, you're not meant to get the bandages wet, so like you're gonna have to throw the bandages out now. <laughs> 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 um, and just yeah, like you know, everything really, you know, from you know, the first act was always something to me, and when I watched it yesterday, that I disliked. I just I, I thought it was such an odd opening to a Saw film, and all that. But you know, I think. You know, if this film wasn't called Saw 10, I think this film should have been called just, you know, John Kramer. I think that's, I think, a much more suitable title for this film because as much as, you know... you don't get the uh, marketing publicity. Oh, exactly. But, I mean, everybody knows who John Kramer is. So even if this was just called John Kramer, I mean, I feel like this is more of a story focused more on Kramer than it is... You know, than it is, you know, like anyone else. This is a story that's purely from his perspective. It's how he sees the world. It's how he sees his whole game that he's playing. It's it's the way that he's seeing his own rules. And I think, you know, that's something I'd be like. I did like that. Uh, so they have a scene where he's sketching on out yes. the traps. I, 
Uh, and then at, at the park. Yeah. yeah and yeah. then he's like, um, he believes at this point that he is cured for life. Correct. Yes. Uh, yeah. And then he like tears out the page and throws it out. It's like, no, I think I'm done with this. Exactly. I love that moment. Like, I thought that was great. And you know, here's an interesting fact which you won't pick up on this, but what he was actually what he was actually sketching is actually a trap from Soul Free. It's an, oh, okay. Yeah, like it's the trap is called the rack, and he was actually sketching that. And so I love that little nod to Soul Free. <laughs> that I thought that was amazing. Like it was a really cool little one. Um, Although um, I am sort of wondering, like he still has the values and beliefs that he does. So oh, yes, if he, he does. did suddenly get a cure for real, I'm wondering right. why he would give up being Soul. Yeah. So you yeah, give up being Jigsaw. You know, I, I think. You know. Like, the thing is, I don't think he would. Yeah. I really don't think he would because I think, you know, his whole philosophy is he wants to kind of, you know, he wants to kind of put bad people in a trap and he wants them to kind of realise, you know, that there yeah, is... Yeah, redemption. Yeah, that there's more to life than the way that than the way that they are treating it. So and that's why it sort of... Like, it was not a nice scene, but then it confused me a little bit with, like, why would he sort of, like... So if symbolizing, if tearing out the page symbolizes that he's giving up on the sore thing, then giving up on the trap. Why yeah, yeah. would he? I don't understand why he would. You know, I <laughs> don't. I don't think he was like. I think. Yeah, actually, no. I won't lie. You do bring up a good point there, um, but you know, I don't. Yeah. I, know, I, I never really thought about that. That's actually a very good question. I know, it's just now. Yeah, that's actually that's gonna be that's gonna be my brain for the next few days. I'm it's sorry, I ruined the movie that. for you. <laughs> 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 um, um, but uh, yeah, yeah. No, you really got me with that one. You really got me. Wow. <laughs> Jeez, that's well. I'm just trying to think. Yeah, um, why? Like, you know, I, I think it's because like you know, he. You know, I think leading up until this point, you know, Kramer's life has been filled with a lot of backstabbing and a lot of uh, tragedy that, uh, you know, Kramer has, has experienced. You know, his wife and child have died in the previous uh, movies. And, um, you know, he was in a car accident, which is how he actually came up with the whole uh, game and all that. So I think, you know, this, I think, you know, by ripping that out, I think it's basically just saying, you know, that this is a new start for Kramer. And then I think when he actually figures out that, you know, that when he actually figures out, you know, that all of this was, you know, just a scam, I think that's when, you know, that's when the jigsaw side of his brain switches on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think, you know, I really liked kind of, the, you know, that kind of balance uh, there. Um, and what else? Uh, traps again? Yes. The, yeah, we'll talk about the <laughs> traps. We'll talk about the traps. Um, so yeah, the first one was the brain. Yeah, no, yeah. The first one was the eyeball, and then the second, second one, one is the is is the bomb. No. Oh no. Oh no. The, oh, wait, the yeah, the bomb. The bomb. bomb. Yeah, it's the bomb. Yeah, where he has to cut uh, cut into his skin and all that, and I think he has to you know cut into a nerve in order to actually get the bomb out. And I was but first. I thought um, he had to cut his whole arm off, and then I was yeah. thinking like. If he cuts his arm off, how the hell is he going to cut off the other one? Oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a great point there. Yeah. Um, then it's sort of like how he actually gets yeah. out. It's like, oh, okay, that makes more sense. Yes. I, you know, I really like that trap. I thought that was incredibly unique. And I think this trap is going to be very controversial for a lot of Soul fans. Because, you know, we're so used to that very, you know, that very formulatic uh, formula of you know, people dying in the traps. And, you know, I think what this trap really shows is that, you know, th there is that chance, you know, there's that chance. I think, I think that what this movie really plays on most is the whole, you know, live or die kind of thing is, you know, that's something Krem says at the beginning of every single game. And I think for that second trap, I think it's the most, mean it's the most meaningful because, you know, I think really what it comes down to is, you know, it's really up to these people. Like, it's out of Kramer's hands now. It's in these people's hands on what, you know, on what they choose. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, I agree with Kramer's philosophy, but, you know, I think by, you know, by, you know, damaging a part of your body, I think, 
Um, you know, I think in Kramer's head, that's, it's supposed to be like, you know, you are healed now. You know, you are redeemed. You get to live, you know, a second life. You know, I think that's kind of what it, it's going for. And, you know, I really like how this guy, uh, is, is it Carlos? No, no, Carlos is a kid, isn't it? I can't remember what that, what this character's name is, but, um, yeah, he, he actually survived it, which is, you know, something we haven't seen in the Soul franchise in quite a while. No, I've, you know, I really like that. I thought the trap was unique. I thought it was something different. We haven't seen this kind Probably of trap before. Kind of two trap survivors in this. Uh, technically. Technically, yes, yeah. No, te yeah, no, technically <laughs> there are two. The second one didn't have the, uh, have the greatest Doesn't have fate. the best ending. <laughs> yeah, it does have the best ending, which yeah, we'll get into that. Um, what did you think of the second trap of the um, bomb one? So, the second trap would, uh, that's, you're talking about the bomb? Yeah, bomb, the okay. bomb, yeah. Uh, I, hmm, I, I, I thought it was a, a decent enough trap. I, I, I was a little bit underwhelmed, especially after the eyeball one, which was like a really elaborate yeah. sort of thing. Yes. And then he, this was like a really simple trap compa compared. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, no, I understand where you're coming from, yeah. Yeah, because like, he, he was like full on in a chair and like all sorts of things and um yeah and then this woman was just a couple of things strapped to his wrist yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no but like i mean that that's you know those wires would have been in his skin as well so that would have that would have been painful that just would have been and you know the fact what i think is also very scary about this trap and i think the reason why this trap is very effective is he has no use of his hands mm. that i think it's just so scary because it's like how the fuck, I mean, what is this guy going to do? I mean, your hair's like the one thing that you kind of need to, you know, get out of any type of situation. I think this trap there puts, you know, a new spin on that. Um, mm -hmm. And then the third trap was the, um, was the razor wire one. I don't know what it's actually called, but, uh, yeah, yeah. W w with the trick I, I in there. I think that was my color. second favourite. I, I did like, I, I liked that one a lot more this time around. Like, the first time I watched this movie, I was not a fan of the traps. And even still now, you know, I would say the traps in this movie, you know, are probably, I mean, there's some traps in here that are really, really good, but there's also some traps, I mean, if I look at the franchise as a whole here, you know, I just don't, I can't really say none, none of these traps will really come to mind. I mean, maybe the This eye, one made me squirm the most. Maybe the eyeball one. Yeah, ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yeah. And I was just like... Yeah, I, I, was, I was looking, I was looking at you all throughout the movie, and whenever I saw you, I was like, you're always like that, and I was just like... That's, you know, that's the soul movie spilt right there. <laughs> that's the reaction you want. So, you know, I love, yeah, no, I love seeing your reaction throughout this movie. That was so good. Mm. Um, but, yeah, you know, that razor wire one. Oh, that fucking hurts. <laughs> that just hurts to watch. Um, it, it's really frustrating because she did everything. And it was like... Yes, yeah, that is, it's a very intense trap. She should have survived. I Exa think she should have survived. Oh, she should have. I mean, she did everything correct. It was like, it was just, it was right there. If only she did it like five seconds earlier, she would have survived this. I'm just like, oh, it really gets under your skin, that trap. Um, uh, yeah, you know, you know, it just, I also have to give credit to this trap as well. The sound design is immaculate in that trap. Like you, you, when she has like the wire under her leg and she goes for that first, you know, snap. You actually hear that. I'm just like, oh, like close your eyes and just listen to that. That is disturbing alone. And I think that is just really great sound work right there. You hear the bone snap and everything. It's oh, it's gruesome as shit. Uh, and you know, this is a very, very bloody trap. Mm. This is uh, you know, cutting off. Her, her leg, I mean, we've seen that in Saw before, but... The belt what? didn't do that much. What? The belts didn't do that much. <laughs> no, I, I, I was looking at that trap, I was like, what is the purpose of this belt? Oh, it's to restrict the blood. Yeah, uh, yeah, actually, no, it's true, yeah, yeah. And then what comes after that is, uh, is probably... I want to say it's satisfying, but also I just want to say, Shit. I mean... Actually, that brings up another point, which I'll talk about in a second, but, you know... The, the decapitation. I don't think we've seen a decapitation in this franchise yet. I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to think of like 180 different traps in this franchise. None of them I can remember being ahead, unless like... Bear trap is close. Yeah, the reverse bear trap, but that's more kind of opening up your face. Mm. This one's more kind of cutting off your head. Yeah, which 
I thought, uh, you know, I thought that was sick. Mm-hmm. I just, I thought that was just, you know, I thought that was twisted. I thought that was so cool to see. I think this Then you tra- just see, like, her body, like, lying in three pieces, essentially, it's, on the floor. And exactly, yeah. So there's her head, and then, you know, her body's intact. Yeah, her, well, her, her's got her leg off. Yes. Her leg's oh, off, okay, and then her body, parts. and then her head. And then her head, yes. So, for, yes. So, you know, I should have doubted you there. I did not think about that. Yeah. Three parts, three parts. Um, yeah. And so, you know, yeah, that, you know, that trap... I really like that. That's probably the most intense trap. That was probably the trap that made me squirm the most. Yeah, definitely, cause... definitely, one hundred percent. Yeah, squirmiest trap. Oh, for sure, for sure. Five um... out of five squirmy. <laughs> <laughs> five out of five squirmy. Yes. Uh, and then what was after that? There was the. Well, was was the heater one next? Actually, um, no. Or was it the? I think it was the brain. No, surgery. the brain. The brain. Brain surgery. Mm, I, fuck I, no. I think fuck that was an no. unfair trap for me. Like Un- unfair how I mean, oh it is, hundred percent unfair. Because like, like as soon as you do anything to the brain, you could instantly die. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, this guy would have either thought his thought his name was fucking Matt. Like, you know, because I know I don't know I don't, I haven't studied you know brain you know uh-huh. brain surgery here, but um. I know, like, removing any part of the brain could mess, you know, up, mess up who you think you are. It'll either kill you or completely change your personality. Exactly, exactly. Um, you know, this trap, I, you know, this trap I actually thought was probably the worst in the entire movie. This, mm. which, I'm, I'm going to get a lot of hate. I'm going to get a lot of hate just from that, that statement alone. But I think this is the worst trap because, you know, I was, you know, where this trap is placed in the movie and then what comes before it, it's like, it, you know, it looks like as soon as these people fuck him over, you go from that to instantly, you know, Amanda and Jigsaw, you know, you know, capturing all these people to then immediately into the game. So I, I'm, I was just thinking, the thing I... when did John Kramer have the time to build this? Like... <laughs> Like it's 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 probably one of the biggest traps in this entire movie. I'm just like, I think that's a that's a thing in the entire Saw series. You would have not been able to build that in just five minutes. I call bullshit on that. So no, I think he already had them preset, but like hidden in like little garages and things. Yeah, but like I mean, I I know you just need to strap them in. Yeah, the thing that kind of makes me question though is like, what put that there when? You know, you might not even use it. So you're wasting probably thousands and thousands of dollars on something that you may or may not use. I mean, it's just so oh, happens, it, it just so happens <laughs> the right people come around for him to use it. So, you know, I just, I, yeah, I, I mean, I was thinking that logically and I was just like, when did you have the time to you know, build and set up all this? I mean, it's not like he just had a, a warehouse ready to go. Because, I mean, you know, if you look at the beginning, you know, John Kramer had a hundred percent, you know, faith in these people. Mm-hmm. He had a hundred percent, you know, faith. So he had no, you know, he had no, he had nothing on his mind to be like, I want to kill these people at first. So, you know, it just, it makes me, yeah, just think really about the whole game. Like when did he set up all this? Like was Amanda the one capturing all these people? And your know, John was the one setting it up, or I yeah. It's, uh, cause they it, ma- they showed it. Amanda was the one that was yeah, capturing the majority m- of the people. M- yeah, majority of the people. So I, I don't know. I okay. So I'd assume that John Cam was setting it up while Amanda was uh, capturing uh, everybody there. Um, okay, so what are we up to? He did. So, a, he did assist with the capture of yes, the, with uh, the um, main woman. yeah, Celia. Uh, yeah, which actually yeah, I want to speak on on her character for a minute. Wait, just before you do, Yes. Uh, I just want to mention that the brain trap, it also has one of those, like, you do everything correctly, so he did everything correctly, but because of how long it takes for the trap to uh, fizzle out the uh, brain matter, it ended yeah. up... Oh, yeah, that... He ended up failing the trap, and it's like, that oh. makes me pissed off. This is a, it's a very realistic trap. I have to admit, it's a very realistic <laughs> trap. Like, uh, I mean, because like, yeah. So okay. yeah, for me, it's sort of like, if you do all the things, you should be able to get off out of the trap. So yeah, but like, it shouldn't, you know, need to, it shouldn't need to be based on a time limit. It's on on how, just waiting for, because like the bone marrow, 
Yeah. That one you had to wait for the bone marrow to go, and the only reason she failed that was because... Because of, of timing. Of, because of how long it took the bone marrow to get sucked out. Correct, yes. Uh, and then for the brain one, uh, the only reason he failed that was because of how long it was taking to... No, no, like, I... I fizzle I, that. I, I'm, I, I disagree with you on that. Okay. Because, you know, he, what is it, uh... Oh, what is it? Mm, 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 Martos? Names don't matter. I don't know what the character's name is now. Um, but anyways, um, at the beginning, he spent, like, a good 20, 30 seconds just being like, Oh, I don't want to do this! <sighs> and just, you know, cry like a whitey bitch instead of just getting in there, you know, getting it done. You know, which is, you know, easier said than done, but he spends... Probably 30 seconds, that 30 seconds could have saved his life. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that's the thing is, you know, he... But, like, he, I feel like that... You should give them some leeway for getting into the headspace of, okay, um, this is happening. Yeah, you know, but, like, you know, I, I think, you know, that that's kind of going against John Cumberland's you know, philosophy. I think, you know, he wants... You know, that also brings up another point. You bring yeah. up a really good point here. These... The this movie is supposed to be intense. You felt intense watching it, right? Yeah. I did not find this movie intense at all because there's a lot of traps where you know the where you know the you know the clock is ticking, you know, and you know they you know they're like miles away from survival here, and I think the problem I uh, the problem I had with all of this was the fact that. Actually, no, sorry, what, 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 where was I getting out of this? What, what so, was... my problem is that even though the, the game player does everything to save themselves, because of how long it takes for the final step to happen, that's why they die. It's not their fault. I think there should be like a... As soon as the person actively does the final step, it should just be a... Game's over. You know, yeah, that's never how this franchise has gone, though. That's never... Okay, think about the uh, the flame, the oh, yeah, radiation the... one. Oh, All the... she has to do is free oh, herself. Yeah. Once she's free of both chains, the game is over. Yeah, totally. That's yes. an instant. Yeah, exactly. Once those two chains. That one yes. was much more satisfying to me. Yeah, yeah. No, because I can see why. I can yeah. See why. Yeah. Whereas, like, yep. the other two died yeah. because of how long the trap took to process. Yeah, which also, felt unfair to me. Yeah, speaking on that fucking flame one as well, on the, um, the heater. It's like, one. A, it's like a jet engine kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, it's not a jet engine. It was a no, radiation. Radiation, yeah. Like, radiation thingy. On that, this trap is probably the easiest in this movie to get out of. If, you know, Celia... Told her to was it go for the yeah go for the foot first. first. She should not have done that. Go for the hand first because at least when you, at least when you can run around. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> That's the thing is if she if her hands loose she will fall to the ground and then from this warehouse there's like a lot of poles and all that and if this heater if the heater thing was supposed to kind of go down, um she could got behind a you know like a pole or something or just something or at least kept her. it on moving. Uh, yeah, yeah, that is another one I'm it, yes. Yeah, all, so moving, and, and I was, yeah, I was just like, you know, that is the easiest goddamn trap, and then you can, I, I don't know, either, you know, find, you know, some, something on the ground to try I and doubt it. that, um, okay, let's say she did the arm first, and so she falls to the ground. Yes, yes. Then, if she just lo lied down on the ground, I doubt that radiation thing would be able to reach her. Exactly, that's what I was thinking, is, that there's, like, I mean... I didn't. I, I need to. I really need to watch this movie one more time. But I didn't see that the um, heater had like a had like um had like a holder or something. At least not like well, it was, it was on some sort of like it, it was um on, on like transportable thing because it could move around. So yeah, but um yeah, I was just like, why why did he go for the leg? Like if he just stopped for like two seconds, if you could go for the hand. I mean. You have a better chance at survival. And then, yeah. like, okay, at the after she um, freed her leg, then yes. the other thing she could do is swing, which would reduce yeah. her time in the in the radiation. Yeah, you know, like I feel like that kind that would have maybe been a little bit hard though. 
That would have been a little bit hard. Yeah, it would have been hard to get the stuff, the momentum yeah. up. Yeah. But it would have gave, given her a bit more time. True. Yeah. No. True. For sure. Um. Uh. What else is it? Let's see here. Um. Yeah. And then. So you were so going to yeah, say something about Celia before I interrupted you. Yes. <laughs> Celia is the franchise's most evilest bitch, at, like in in this entire I franchise. Agree. <laughs> she is just an awful, cold-hearted person, down down to a core. She is the worst person you could ever come across. Because as I was watching this movie, I was paying attention to her character, and I was like, "You, you're giving hope. You're giving encouragement to your friends here." But that encouragement, that's leading them to die. You're basically telling telling them to go kill themselves. And that's what they did. They rely on her word. And I was just like, you know, you're, the way you're speaking is just so, you know, it's just so confident to them. Like, you're certain. And then... I'm wondering, what if Celia said to break the leg first to make it harder for her to Oh, succeed? yeah. No, that's what she would have done. That's what she would have done, 100%. Um, you know, I don't know why she would want to do that, but, you know... Because she's a bitch. Oh, oh, I <laughs> um, But, you know, the other thing as well is the fact that, you know... Well, look, this... One of the things she said was, like, each kill is a small... Gives her a bigger share of the money. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, that's all this movie was about for her. It was all about the money the entire time. It was never about, you know, her friend's survival. It was never about her survival. You know, I think what her character really needs to think is, like, what if, you know, she was in, you know, Gabriella's, you know, situation? Like, where she was actually the one in, in, in the trap. Like, it's, you know, I feel like she, if, yeah, I know. She is just the worst character as well. Um, and, you know, I think what also makes it worse is... Lying to her, lying to her friends' faces. Um, I wouldn't say she's a bad character, just an evil one. I, like I'd say she's both. I mean, as far as the way her character's structured, I mean, it's so obvious that she's written to be the bad guy in this movie. Mm. She's the bad guy for sure. Um, you know, because you know she's always, yeah, she, you know, she, you know, she's made a career right out of. You know, out of make out of people's suffering, out of giving them false hope, and I think you know she's got so used to this mindset in and this lifestyle of just you know seeing people of just seeing people die, and I think in this movie I think it really shows that her character has become desensitized to that, yep. and you know I I, just, I think to me this that is just so sick that you know that you have this job where you have to lie to people and you get probably millions upon millions of dollars each year just to give you know people who have you know cancer false hope which you know i want to speak you know about that as well you know you are an awful person to lie if you're lying to a cancer patient you are just the worst person ever and you know i think that's you know i think that alone i mean makes it you know, it makes it really hard to root for her character, which you know, which brings me on to my next point here about this game. I was talking about before about the intensity mm -hmm. of this movie. This movie was not intense. I teased that before, but um, yeah, this movie was not intense because you're in this game where there's you know a lot of intense sequences, but those intense sequences don't have any characters that you feel sympathetic for. You don't want to see these characters survive. You want to see them fucking die at least for me i don't want people who constantly will continue to lie to people you know surviving and i think these characters have been built up to be you know these you know these rich assholes that have you know just um, have made well i thought that uh the people were essentially they were brought in and it was kind of just part of the job for some of them, I think. They weren't necessarily... It might not have necessarily yeah, been... You, yeah, like, I mean, uh, yeah, was it Matos or... The, yeah, the guy in the brain surgery trap, like... I'm not he, sure he necessarily knew what was going on. Yeah, no, like, he, yeah, he mentioned that, you know, that this was all silly as planned and all that and those two, but, like, they still would have known that, you know, what they're doing is wrong. I mean, she would have definitely specified that, oh, you know, we're, we're going to make a career out of giving people false information. 
and so, all yeah, that. Yeah, they wouldn't know that. Yeah, um, they, they would have like, known. They would have known that they weren't actually cutting into his skull. Exactly. It was <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and yeah, that scene as well was magnificent mm. because it's like it really it makes you have two different views. One, when you're first seeing it, you actually think that's his brain, and then mm. the second time when you see it, it's like, oh shit, that was only a videotape, and you know that is just clever writing. And then I was I was sort of thinking like, oh, why would you let him watch that? That's bad. And then they move it, and it's like, oh, okay, no, it was just a mis- <laughs> mistake. No, exactly. it was intentional. <laughs> well, exactly the fact that they moved it, yeah, the fact that they moved it as well, yeah, that was yeah. So yeah, these. You know, it's really just hard to really feel intense for characters that you really want to die. And I think for these characters, that's why just, this is, I think, one of the weaker games. Like, this movie is nowhere near as bad as Soul 5, um, you know, by, by a long shot. But this film has some of the worst characters, I think, in the entire franchise. Because, at least with the other Soul movies, there was, you know, a reason, like, did these... Did this person deserve to be in the trap or not? In this movie, it is just these these people are here. You know, these people. You know, these people are. You know, these people are bad down to the core. And I think just on that end, I just I did not feel remotely intense. Like if anything, I, I felt more emotion coming from their death because I was like, now the world is at least cleared. Of you know, of these two or three assholes that wouldn't. That I, th- wouldn't. I think it was getting sucked into the. It's like, oh, please, please don't kill me, please don't. Kill me. Exactly. Yeah. It, it was, yeah. Like that. I mean, I can see why. I'm saying I can see why, but I was also just like, you know, I was just like, you know, like, I, are you kidding me? Like, you know the reason why you're here. Like, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. You know, yeah. That was that was annoying. Um, what else? Uh, yeah. Like, this film. You know, I'm still a bit mixed on this. This is a very unique Saw film. This is a very different Saw mm-hmm. film to what we're used to seeing. Um, the you know, like the first act in particular is very different. But then even when we get into the game, this doesn't feel like OG Saw. Like it, it definitely has some moments that feel like the old films, but... I don't know, it was something about the way that this film was colour graded, the way that it was edited, the way that it was shot, which I was not a fan of. The editing in this film, I think in parts it is really good. I think the first act has some of, has probably the best editing in the entire film. But then when we get to the uh what trap was it? The brain surgery one, I believe. It just feels like you're, it just feels like the camera's shaking around. It doesn't feel like there's any narrative reason for that. I understand, you know, that's what Saw fans love, but I just found that messy. There wasn't like that whole cool, you know, feeling. It's meant to be emphasizing the pain. Yeah, I, I can kind of say that, but it was just I don't know, I I did not like the way that was shot. I did not like the way that was really, you know, edited into the film. I mean Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, you kinda of have a point there. But yeah, I yeah, I was still not a fan of that. Uh, the colour grading this, there's parts of this movie that feel like a Saw film, there's other parts that do not feel like a Saw movie, uh, to me. Like, the whole yellow, which this film has a lot of yellow, I mean, I was like, you know, I was like, sure, I mean, I'll accept that, but that, you know, that's just, I don't know, that doesn't really remind me of Saw, and I think, you know, that the green filter that was in the other films, I don't know, I think that's something that's always just been, you know, the iconic saw look so and you know that is in here for sure there's a few traps where that's used but um yeah i watching this film made me miss that miss made me miss that og saw look um that we had this film was shot with uh digital cameras as well the other films were shot in 35 millimeter okay as well um i didn't pay attention to any of that stuff oh right (laughs) yeah so you know this film i I don't think it was shot with panavision but it was shot with yeah some kind of digital uh, camera and yeah, the other films were in 35 millimeters, so there was like that grainy look, which also was kind of missing in here as well. I mean, I can see why they don't do it, but I don't know. I think that's something I mean, that just kind of becomes character here. You, you know, I think you know, at the end of the day, this is a film that this is a great standalone Saw film. I don't know if I would watch this when kind of doing a Saw marathon, like you're not gonna watch it a third time. Uh, I mean, I enjoy it, but it's like, 
this is a film that it you know it it doesn't really connect into Saw 2 in any way. It doesn't really connect into the events of Saw 1. Like there's a few lines of dialogue that happened with um, John and Amanda, but it's just, it didn't it felt, didn't really feel like it connected to you know either of those two films. It felt like you know this was like meant to be a standalone uh, a standalone film here. Um, and you know, speaking on John and Amanda as well, those two I think had some of the best scenes. You see more of a established uh, relationship here with those two, and I think there's some really great moments. There's a great, great scene with those two where they're talking about, uh, was it whether we not where Amanda's talking to John about you know like is this the right thing to do and you know she's actually questioning you know she's questioning the suffering and the game itself and all that and I love that because I was like you know Amanda's probably a few weeks just uh, out of the reverse bear trap here and so you know she would still be very early trained just you know that whole you know that whole apprentice you know and leader you know connection I really loved in here what did you think of the John and Amanda relationship um, here it w makes sense to have young fit um, Amanda do the majority of the capturing people because oh, he, yeah. he doesn't have the physical prowess. Oh to yeah, do no, that. he he would not because I think Toby Bell is eighty in real life. Hmm. He is exceptional in this movie. He yeah. is phenomenal. I I I think this is probably my favorite performance of Toby Bell in the entire Saw franchise. I think just from an emotional level, even from like. A physical level, there's some scenes where he it, he's really the one who's carrying this movie, mm. and I think he's just phenomenal in this movie. I think he's so good. Same with Amanda, minus the uh, wig she was wearing. I did not think it looked very convincing. So I couldn't remember Amanda at all going into this movie. Really? Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> uh, uh, so okay. um, when you saw. Him, uh, when you saw the kidnappings, yes. Uh, did you think it was? Were you surprised when Amanda was revealed instead of him? No, no, because that was in the trailer, which they should not have shown Amanda in the trailer. That would have been such a good surprise watching this movie. Um, I understand why they did. Like they want to get more Saw fans on board, but they already have an audience for us. I don't know really to the point. On it, but yeah, she was revealed in the trailer, so I was not surprised by that. I went into right. the movie expecting to see Amanda, and um, I went to the movie blind, so yes, okay, I was, so I, could, I did get the surprise. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah right, yes, <laughs> Who, who's this? <laughs> yeah, um, so yeah, you know, it was revealed in yeah, the official trailer yeah, that Amanda was in the movie, which you know, I regret seeing that trailer because I feel like that would have been a great reveal. I would have loved to have had your reaction uh -huh. to that, uh, you know, watching the movie, um, and now quickly. Fuck, we've, we've always been going for an hour talking about this. Oh, seriously, Did, already? Yeah, 40, uh, 48 <laughs> minutes now. Um, can we talk about, you know, the twist ending? We still got, uh, yeah, so I, I I actually really enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I still feel the same about how I did the first time. I really, really don't like this twist ending at all. I mean, you know, there's a, there's, there's a few hints, kind of, I went into the movie knowing what the twist ending is, you know, watching this movie a second time, and, you know, there's definitely a few hints that are very subtle, which, you know, I love, you know, the, the, the attention to detail and the subtle, uh, you know, the subtle evidence of detail that this film uh, has. Uh, you know, there's a great scene where Parker is um, strapped to a chair and, uh, what is it? John Crumb is putting a gun in a cupboard and uh, Parker's actually looking at the gun and, you know, Kramer knows Parker's looking at the gun and just, you know, a scene like that, like, you you reflect on that after you watch the twist ending or when you're watching it a second time and you're like, oh, okay, so, you know, Kramer knew this whole time and all that and just, you know, a little moment like that really goes a long way for the twist. Um, but I think my problem with the twist ending is the execution. I think the execution of it is... You know, is really bad. Um, the ending of the film really doesn't make a whole lot of sense, though. Because the fact that Celia is alive, no, no. Celia you, should have died. Yes, <laughs> you do not make. She is her... so totally coming back and having revenge on him. Oh, exactly. There is like, no way she's not. <laughs> exactly. I mean, she's she will either get out of there. I mean, she'll I don't know. She'll find like 
she would hold her breath, she would find like a sharp object, she was trying to you know, cut out, um, uh, yeah, it, it was rubber that she had to put her head through, so yeah, she will cut out that, and you like, know, she'll more like, like just, yeah, She's the out. most evil person in the movie, exactly. and she's the one that survived. Yes, I was just <laughs> like, I was just like, there's, you're setting up for another storyline here, you're setting up for an, another film yeah. here, so I mean, yeah, like, she's gonna, yeah, she's gonna do something quite bad to John Cram, but you know, John Kramer being John Kramer, he he's gonna one one up her hundred percent. Yeah, for sure. But um, yeah, the fact that she's the final girl in this movie, I was like, bullshit, <laughs> bullshit. Um, oh, for, yeah, I want to talk about why I actually enjoyed. Yes, this talk. actually, I'm curious to know this. Yeah, we actually haven't talked. Yeah, you haven't told me about that, so I'm curious. Yeah. Okay, go. so, uh, for me, once the uh, you know, he gets the gun and his um. Doing the like, okay, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah the he, whole, he, the, the whole the, chain yourself yeah. up and all that, yeah, yeah. Once that, that happens, I'm sort of like, I'm sure he's going to turn us around somehow. Oh, exactly, yeah. I have yeah. no idea how, exactly. I mean, you have, you have a gun <laughs> pointed at your head. I mean, they're chained up, they're, they're both chained up, they've got he's got the gun, um, and then oh. The kid comes along. Oh, as well. Carlos, <laughs> Carlos, yeah. And so, like, I know that. Uh, so he gets strapped into the seesaw, this seesaw thing where there's meant to be one person here and one person here, and whoever is yes down there is supposed to get drowned by blood. Correct. Yeah. And I was going into that trap, going like, oh, how should... is that supposed to kill yes. someone? Well, I mean, no, like, I, I think it's, you know, it's the fact that you're, you're, you're drowning, you're, you're, you're Yeah, you're, I do get that, that yeah, you're, you're putting you're, yourself above the other person. Exactly, and you're, you're also, you're, you're losing oxygen because, you know, it's just gallons and gallons of blood just pouring into your mouth. Like, it's specifically targeted towards the mouth. Um, this, like, also, this, there's a great joke, there's a great joke in that scene where, uh, Celia is like, is like, was it, is like, um, was it, uh, waterboarding, waterboarding, bloodboarding. Yeah, bloodboarding. I, <laughs> I was just like... Yes, I was so that that line is just so so great. It's yeah that that alpha was just an amazing amazing line. <laughs> then right uh, when, when the twist happened, then I realised oh that was the plan. He wasn't it wasn't supposed to be a lethal trap because yeah. he was planning to have him yes and Amanda uh, I, in no, no, Cecilia. Was it, well, no no he he was so his plan was that the betray the. Betrayal thing would happen, uh, and like, then how how could he predict that that was going to happen? Because he, he so he did know that um, the guy oh yeah I, uh, yes. was going to yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah was true, in was true, in on it true and yeah, but he true. couldn't get uh, he couldn't uh, kidnap him yes like the others yes and so uh, his idea was okay well I'll lure him he, in yeah by kidnapping the others yeah and then. Do uh, trick him into betraying us, but in the process, uh, they end up getting trapped. True. In yeah. And stuff. No. True. Yes. So his plan all along was that the seesaw was meant for him and Amanda, not uh, C- Celia and the other guy. Yeah. Um, Parker. Which is why it wasn't a very lethal trap because he yeah. wasn't. It wasn't supposed to be lethal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then... You know, which, you know, like, I kind of like that, but I was just like, where is... Like, I would, I just want to see Celia getting brutalised her. I just want to see her get, I don't know, cut in half. I just want to see something. I don't want her to survive. So, when that ending came, I, think, I was just like, fuck you. I did think it was a bit weird that, um, so, in the gas, when the gas was, was on... That yes. you could see, like, the guy's face was oh, getting really, really yeah. messed up. Yeah. From, and uh, then her face was fine. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Not until like, uh, like, like right a lot longer. End. Yeah, right at the end of the, that. Her, her, she started to get some scarring on yep. toward the end, but like his face was like really messed up. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> hers was just yeah. like, oh no, I'm like, fine. This yeah, is just... <laughs> like, yeah. It was just like, oh, you know, a little scratch right there, but yeah, you know, yeah. like it just, yeah, I know. I really dislike the way they wrote Celia in that ending, and you know, I don't think I love is I love. The back and forth between, uh, what is it, John Kramer and Carlos? I love that 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 back and forth when they're on that, uh, what is it, um, 
What's the word? What was it called again? The up, down the seesaw. Thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. The yeah, the see yeah seesaw. Thank you. Um, yeah, like that. You know, I really just like their back and forth, and you know, there's a scene in the movie where they where, you know, uh, Carlos is teaching John the word pull. Yeah. And I was just like, you know, you know, this is establishing a good chemistry here. And that's gonna come back into play in the movie, and you know. You know, and it eventually does, and you know, I really like that back and forth. And there's almost like this family dynamic that goes on between, you know, between the three of them at the end of this movie. I like that, um, you know, and just you know the fact, you know, that I uh, was it Celia, you know, the fact that she backstabs her her own. Uh, I'm not sure if it's like boyfriend or husband, but you know, like you know Parker as well. I was just like, I understand the whole survival of the. Of the fittest kind of you know situation, you can understand that. But I was just like, this movie should be the opposite way around. I would have loved Parker to survive, not fucking Celia. But you know, I have a lot of strong feelings about her. So um, um, the thing that I want to just say is like that the thing that makes me enjoy the twist ending yes. was just how like how well it's thought written. ahead it was, yeah. how thought through it was because yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was he. The trap looks like it was meant to be designed for human cilia. Yes. But yeah. it was actually designed uh, for um, yeah. the Jigsaw and Amanda. Amanda. Yeah. And then, uh, and that's why it wasn't lethal enough. And then, like, uh, the, the they put the money... And that was the thing yeah, that triggered. I love that. Oh, I love that. I love that bit. I thought that was so cool. Because, you know, as soon as they pull that bag off, it's like... And, like, you, you hear that music come on. I'm just like, okay, where's the twist? So, it's like, on. You, you, yeah. so you, that's like the choice. It's like, uh, you can either take the money and die, yeah. or you can leave the money and live. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and now, the last thing I going to talk about, which, you know, I don't know how much of this you can actually speak about, but... um. The after credit scene. Uh -huh. What did you think of? What did you think of that trap? The uh, the um. It was a gruesome tickle. looking trap. Yeah. I was disappointed I'm... that I didn't get to see the actual blades oh, pierce yeah. the belly. Yeah, that you know, because I mean, you know, the blades were like were like that. I was just like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I wanted yeah, like, to know I'll... how he would get out of the trap. What, what yeah. does he need to do to yeah, would... get out of it? Yeah, I. Yeah, I would love to see like an extended death scene like on the Blu-ray or something just to kind of go in more in detail on that. But I think the thing that really surprised me about that scene, I mean, I went into the movie really expecting this, but um, was seeing bloody uh, Hoffman back, mm -hmm. which, you know, seeing, you know, Costas Mandalore back as Hoffman, like that was just like, you know, first time I watched it, I literally stood up in the theater and cheered, yes. Like I was so happy to see, you know, Hoffman back in the pitch and, you know, that's the thing as well, you know, Hoffman, like, there's so much to break down in this movie, Jesus Christ. But Hoffman actually has, you know, you know, a decent part to play in the, you know, in the actual, you know, runtime of this, uh, in, like, the almost two-hour runtime out of this movie has, because there's a part where, you know, Hoffman was actually the one to capture, uh, was it? Hoffman was actually the one to, you know, keep an eye on Parker and all that, because there's a great little, you know, voice cameo in the movie from him so you know that I, I really loved and you know Hoffman's presence in this film you know definitely you know feels he definitely feels like he's there he he you know you find out what his part is and so you know that I really like this time around why whether it's just like a little minor cameo uh Hoffman however I mean he, I, I love seeing Costas Mandalore but you know the saw films you know came out in the 2000s mm -hmm. now this is 2023 now you know, there's obviously going to be a big age gap for a lot of these actors, you know, which you can definitely tell because, you know, was it, I think you get Jigsaw should be either like 30 or 40, uh, you know, around there. Um, I don't want to do maths in my head at the moment, but, you know, it would have, he would have been, you know, around that age. Um, and, you know, he, he looks like he's in his 70s, 80s in this movie. So, you know, that was, yeah, you know, I think just, yeah, the age gap, I mean, it doesn't take away from the movie, but it's just, it's something that, like, you could really benefit from some, you know, from some de age. I understand that these movies don't have the biggest budget, so they don't have that, you know, they don't have that technology to pull off, you know, a de aging and all that. Um, I thought the way they did Amanda was fine. I thought, you know, Amanda. I mean, there's there's definitely scenes where the color contrast is a little bit too high 
on her scenes, but you know, I think besides that, you know, I think Amanda looks fine, but then, you know, Hoffman, he just looks 20 years older in this movie, and I was just like, this is going back to, you know, Saw here, like, you could have done, you know, you could have added a few more touches just to make him look, you know, classic Hoffman, you know, he's, he has the, the iconic voice, the iconic look and all that, but I think other than that, it was, you know, it was great seeing him back, it was great seeing a familiar, uh, a familiar face, um, they get that pretty purple background. Oh, right. oh <laughs> yes, they get the purple background. <laughs> um, uh, you know, and you know that trap. I, you know, I would love to see. Like, it, it might be just of like, of, you know, of like the, um, of like the, uh, what is it? The, you, you know, when you were a kid and your mum used to play the tickle monster with you. Do you remember? Uh, um, yeah, tickle me, Emma, Elmo. Yeah, tickle Elmo type thing. Yeah, like it might be of that. It was like. Oh, just the, or just Yeah, the, it was like the whole, like, yeah, the, it, it, like, it felt like, you know, like a, a tickle type trap, I was like, it was tickling him to death or something, <laughs> that's kind of what I got, it, it didn't look, because it looks like the boys were like, you know, a, you know, a decent and gap away from him, but it was just like, shh, shh, shh. yeah, it was very, very far away from him. Yeah, so I was just like, what, what, is this supposed to kind of move into him, or how is this trap supposed to operate, and then we have like a really cool kind of spiral uh, zoom in. I thought that was, you know, a really great end, um, you know, and this is something, you know, I'll catch you up on a bit here, but this was actually uh, written by Pete Goldfinger and Josh uh, Stolberg, who are responsible for writing Jigsaw, that came out in 2017, mm -hmm. and Spiral, that came out, yeah, I don't know what year that movie came out, I mean, I've already forgotten about that, that movie, uh, and then they've written Saw X, and I think this is definitely the best out of those three movies. As far as, you know, this is definitely nowhere near my favourite Saw movie. It doesn't have my favourite traps. Um, I think this probably has one of my favourite stories, however, in the Saw franchise. But I think, you know, I think the, the, the traps, while really cool and some really unique twists that this film offers, it's, it doesn't really expand upon the Saw story. This is just another Saw story just to exist. It doesn't really do anything to the lore of Saw, I mean, we see more of Jigsaw, which was cool, we see more human side of him, which, you know, I've been wanting to see, but once we kind of get in, into the game, the game was very disappointing in this movie uh, for me, but, you know, I think at the end of the day, I enjoyed this movie a lot more, I had, I think, a great time watching it, I think this film hits the emotional beats that it needs to, I think, I, you know, I think the gore, I think it's all practical in the film, and I think the gore is on point, I think it's very, it's very, you know, it's very in your face. These traps are also back to basics as well, which I love. It's, it's not like these big extreme, you know, traps like the raising, uh, was it, uh, raising ball from like Saw 7, where it's like this big level of death, death trap and shit. Like, you know, I loved how the traps were, were back to basic. Yeah, this. they were quite basic. In this one. So, and you know, I loved how there was still that kind of like, you know, live or die thing, but I was like, I want to see all these people die. I just, I don't care. So I don't want to see them all die. So aside die. from the eye trap, which was not real, which, yeah, one, that was would, which one would be the most elaborate? Probably the uh, saw, the head chopping off one. No, like I wouldn't even call that real elaborate. I'd probably call, you know, the brain surgery one probably the most elaborate. Because, you know, if you look at, you know, that whole, that whole trap from yeah. like the whole seat or the cords that are connected to it or the like everything that is a very i think that's probably the most elaborate trap like i think the razor one that one's very basic that one's i think a very basic one because it's really just a wire it's really just it's something that kind of just moves kind of back and you know and all that and then you're kind of doing the rest i think that's a very basic yeah okay. uh that's a very basic trap um, so you, um, I'm gonna ask you um, two questions here. Okay. For one, what is your favourite trap in Saw X? And then what's your final rating for Saw X to end off the review? Uh, let's say favourite trap. Uh, it's probably the eyeball one, although yeah. I also really exactly. quite liked the uh, saw blade. The, the one with oh, the, oh, the head, head, yeah, the, the head the decapitation, one. yeah, yeah, I quite like that one as well. Yeah, that was good, that was good. Like, I love the eyeball one. That one, I think I really enjoyed this time around, just because it just, it reminds me of what Saw, of what Saw is. And I think, you know, just, the like, you know, there's like some really cool details in that trap, which I think is really cool. And, you know, also, there's one more thing I want to address here. I will let you answer that second question in a second, but I have to address this. I love, love that opening scene because it's like after the eyeball trap, you know, the um that doctor guy is like easing the room and like and Kramer's like, you know, like you know, that was a good choice. And I'm just like, yes. <laughs> like you know, Kramer, he has a soul. He actually like 
you know, it's you know, I, I know there's like I know you. That will say that will sound he'll, loved. He'll, he'll let people live as live, long as uh, as long as they make the, that right choice. Like yeah. as soon as he picked up that you know watch, it was like yeah, I'm gonna kill you. But then as soon as he put it back, it was like you know this this isn't a bad guy. You know mm. he's actually you know an all bad person. Um, okay. Yeah, and then what was your final rating for so, Sonic? So, I thought the story was good. I liked the the twist ending was really good uh, for me. I enjoyed yes. it a lot. Yeah, fair enough. I respect that. That's right. Uh, just because of like how well it was set up. Yeah, no, fair <laughs> enough. I, I can I can understand that. I can understand that from a writing perspective. I really like the way that that uh, twist ending is written. Uh, I just. Yeah, and that, that twist ending I think is just the weakest compared to all seven films. Like I, you know, I can understand why you like because you haven't seen all these mm. movies. But I think you know, I think Saw Four has a much better twist than this. I think Saw Two has a much better twist than this. I think every other movie has a better twist. I think this. I think the only twist that's worse than this is Saw Five. I think Saw Five has a worse twist than this, but this one has a probably has a much better twist and a much better executed twist than Saw 5 but look at the entire franchise this is definitely going to be one of the weaker uh, you know twists and easier if I was to rank all of them so so I think uh, in terms of downsides I felt like the I actually prefer more elaborate traps yeah you know yeah, yeah but this film was kind of back in the early stages of Kramer though okay yeah it's because he, he I mean he's probably a few years into this now so I mean I wasn't expecting anything elaborate from the film i was expecting definitely a hint of that in here which you know which you do get but uh yeah mm-hmm. um and i yeah you, you know how i didn't like the thing where people would do everything right yes oh, and then yeah, they yeah, still yeah, you feel about that. die yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 uh, just because of um how long it took to process yes. so i didn't like that yeah uh and the the start was a little bit slow for me, but it was, uh, but like, it, I did, did, it, it did tell yeah, a good it, story. It, it did, and, you know, and it, it eventually does pick up so. as well. But, you know, I never felt like there was a moment in this where it was, it was clutter, where it felt like it was pulling down the pacing. I felt every moment was justified with its story. I felt like it was always meaning something. It was always building to something. And, you know, I never felt the pacing lacked in this film. Um, you know, I always felt like you know it was always engaging. It was it was all it was always an you know an immersive you know experience you know watching this movie. Um, but in terms of like, but I yeah because I really like the trap, the twist, and I and the traps, liked yeah. the story, and uh, they did have some good traps in this. Uh, I'm gonna yeah. give it an eight out of ten. An eight out of ten, yeah. You know, for for me, there's still you know. There's still a few problems I have. A lot of those problems coming from the first viewing to this viewing uh, have definitely turned into positives now. I do like this movie a lot more than I did uh, the first time. And I think, you know, that all had to do with expectations, which, you know, I've told you all about that. I think the expectations definitely ruined the first time I uh, watched this movie. And I think, you know, for now, I'm going to give this movie a 9.5 out of 10. Okay. I, yeah, I think there's a few problems, but, you know, those problems... I, I can kind of look past. I think this is a solid standalone entry in the in the Saw franchise. Um, you know, all of everything I've said, you know, I still hold true. Like, I don't think it really connects to Saw 1 or Saw 2. I mean, there's definitely hints that it takes place after Saw 1, but I suppose, you know, connecting to Saw 2, it doesn't, yeah, really yeah, do Yeah, I, I was there. engaged the whole time, and exactly, yeah. I, uh, I didn't feel, yeah, I didn't feel bored. Uh, I, I enjoyed... Yeah, watching this. Yeah, the same here. Like I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to to another one. I think there's, you know, there's definitely that revenge storyline. There's definitely that revenge mm-hmm. storyline for uh, Celia and you know going after John Kramer. Like that's going to be Saw Eleven. Yeah, I'm said <laughs> it's, it's got to you know, be. Oh yeah, like you yeah, like yeah, the twist ending in Saw Eleven is going to be like oh Celia is like one of Jigsaw's apprentices. I bet that's going to be one of like because you know. Because, you know, you know, it seems like that's a habit for this franchise with, you know, a lot of the apprentices. It's like, you know, like, oh, if they survive, you know, they finally see the appreciation of life and, and they become, like, you know, a follower of Kramer. So, I don't know. I think either it's, it's going to be a twist in uh, Saw 11 where Celia is actually on Kramer's side or it's going to be a twist where, I don't know, where she's teaming up, you know, with another apprentice against 
John Kramer. Like, I don't know, I think, I like to, I think it's going to go one of those two ways, but yeah, we'll have to see. You know, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the future of Saw. I would highly recommend for you to go back and watch all the Saw movies. <laughs> I, think, I think you would really enjoy them. I think if you like the traps in this, the franchise only gets bigger and better with them. So mm-hmm. I think that's something you would enjoy. So yeah, nine and a half for me, and what was your final eight. rating? Yeah, and an eight out of ten. So yeah, that's our spoiler review, our very long hour and ten minute review <laughs> on, uh, on Saw X. It was your favorite everybody who has uh you know stayed stayed to uh you know listen to us talk about it. i hope you've enjoyed our our over one hour review on saw x so as guys yeah we'll catch you in the next video have a good one see you